Welcome to left and right side behavior of a graph. So today what I want to do is show you how to find um, or determine the left and right hand behavior of a function. Now, the reason why it's helpful to determine the left and right hand behavior of a graph is it's going to help us determine, you know, when we have a graph that is with a very high degree, it's a lot of time hard to determine where is your graph heading and, you know, kind of what does the graph even look like? You know, am I plotting the graph correctly? Um, you know, what, what is actually the form of this graph? So there's a couple rules that we can follow to find our, um, what is the end behavior of our graph? Where is it started from and where is it heading to? So when doing this, um, a couple things we need to know about our Cartesian coordinate system. So if we have an x and a y plane, one thing we know that is that our x, this goes on all the way to infinity. So remember this x line here, our x-axis, goes all the way to infinity, and it also continues all the way to a negative infinity. Now, for um, usually you've learned that this is your y-axis, and you know your y-axis goes all the way up to infinity and all the way down to negative infinity. But since we started talking about functions, what we've started to do is really replace our y, I'll keep it there, but our y with a f of x. Because we use our f of x as our output value when we we're talking about functions. And this, this is just going to help us um, write, our, uh, write our end behavior a little bit better because what we'll notice is we're always, you can see I have a list of functions here. So it's going to be helpful for me to write my end behavior in terms of those functions. Um, the next thing I want to kind of go back through is something that you guys should uh, kind of have a little prior knowledge with, and those are really going to be our two pair functions. So what I did was I wrote f of x equals x squared, and I also have f of x equals x cubed. Now, I wrote up these two parent graphs because, and I also wrote the reflections of these two parent graphs, because when I'm doing left and right hand behavior, um, this is going to tell me, this is going to be my best clue for me to be able to determine what, how I know what's happening with my graph. So the next thing we need to look at is if I remember, if I have a negative x squared, now my graph is going to be reflected downwards. And if I have a negative x cubed, what you notice is my, it, my graph is a reflection of that over the x-axis. Now, something important to understand about the end behavior is if you look at the end behavior of my x squared, my graph just in the blue here, what you notice is at, it doesn't really matter as my x goes to you know, infinity or negative infinity. Both my end behavior, all the time, both comes up. It never goes below um, you know, its minimum point. However, if I have a reflection of this, where it's a negative A, well, now my end behavior goes down to negative infinity for both, no matter if my values are going to the left or going to the right, all my values go down to negative infinity. And what's important now about when I have an odd degree with this function is my function, my regular function, as I go to the left, my behavior goes down to the, left, to the negative, and as I go to the right, my end behavior goes up. Well, when it's the negative version, it's the exact opposite. When I go to the, the my x values go to the left, my graph rises, and when I go to the right, my graph falls. So I'm going to use a little bit different analogy for both of these problems, um, and I just want to kind of use some general tips that we're going to talk about. So there's some general rules that we like to say, and. A couple things we need to understand is what we're going to do is we're going to look at our degree of our, we're going to look at the degree of a polynomial and we're going to look at the coefficient. And I don't know if I have enough room over here or not, but one thing we need to know is when your degree, when your degree is even, okay, what you're going to have is your, your um, end behavior is there either going to be both. Um, rising or both falling. All right, and I'll go a little bit more technical definition in a second. But you guys can notice, for if it's an even degree, either my graph always always rises or it always falls. However, if my degree is odd, mm, I'll erase this. If my degree is odd, then I either my graph either um, falls to the left and rises to the right, or 
or my graph rises to the left and falls to the right. Okay? And another way you might say, well, okay, I kind of understand the rise to the left. Another way that sometimes textbooks that we use to represent this is we say as x approaches infinity. So what I can say for this is as my x values approach infinity, as they keep on going to infinity, my f of x, which is my output value, where does that go? And you could say for this function, as x approaches infinity, my function approaches infinity. And then for f of x equals x squared, as x approaches negative infinity, so as my graph approaches negative infinity, my f of x, my output, also approaches infinity. Okay? And what we notice is, since my degree was even, we notice that both of these both rise, meaning they both go up to positive infinity. However, let's take a look at the negative infinity, or the negative x squared. So now, as x approaches infinity, my f of x, my output value, is now going to approach negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, what you can determine is now my f of x, the output value of my function, now approaches negative infinity. So sometimes uh, you might be dealing with um, some notation that's going to look like this. To make things simpler for you right now, I'm just going to deal with rises to the left and rises to the right. So what we're going to do is to determine this, I'm pretty much going to go off of what my parent graphs are. And because it's really easy because it doesn't matter. As long as, if you have an x squared, if you guys can just remember what a parabola looks like and know, okay, when it's a positive x squared, it opens up. When it's a negative x squared, it opens down. This is going to be the same end behavior if it's x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixteenth. You're going to have the same end behavior. The same thing with the cubic function. If I have x cubed, what that means is I'm going to fall to the left and rise to the right for all of them. So x to the fifth, x to the seventeenth. They all do this, they have the same end behavior. They fall to the left, rise to the right. However, if I have a negative coefficient, a negative leading coefficient on my term, now it's going to be the exact opposite. It will now be rises to the left and falls to the right for all i. So let's go through some problems and let's try to see what we can do for this. So here I have a negative x squared plus 6x plus 9. I don't care about any other numbers except for my leading term, which is the negative x squared. Since, so now I'm just going to rewrite this. I have a negative x squared. Since my 2 is even, I know it's going to look like a parabola. And since I have a negative negative, it's going to look just like this. So therefore, my end behavior is I'm just going to say falls left and falls right. Okay? Over here, let's take down our leading coefficient, which is 1 half x cubed. So now we have an odd degree. So therefore, it's going to be one of my odd, uh, odd graphs over here. And what you can see from here, is on my odd graphs, and then I have my leading coefficient, which is positive. So therefore, it's going to look like my blue graph right here, which is f of x equals x cubed. So therefore, my graph is going to fall to the left and rise to the right. The next one, you're going to have to do a little distributive property. Once you do a little distributive property, what you get is a 3 fourths x to the fourth. Okay? So now I look at my degree, and since my degree is even, I know it's going to be either one of these graphs. This is f of x equals x squared, and this is f of x equals negative x squared. Now I look at my leading coefficient, and I notice that that is a um, positive number, so therefore it's going to be f of x equals x squared. It's going to replicate exactly the same end behavior. So therefore I can say that it's going to rise left and rise Right. Because what you can notice is this graph is going to follow the same behavior. It rises to the left and it rises to the right. All right, lastly, let's bring down our leading term, which is a negative x to the fifth. Remember, I don't care about any other term, so let's just write this down. We look at it, it's going to be an odd, so it's going to follow my black graph here, which is f of x equals negative x cubed, which follows this pathway. Now, since it's negative, it's going to rise to the left and it falls to the right. Rise to the left and then falls to the right. 
Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do now is uh, I'd like to give a couple problems up here, put them on the board, give you some time to try those problems, and then what I'll do is I'll come back here and I'll uh, check your answers with you. Any questions, Doc? You try those two steps yet? Got to write out these four problems real quick. Now I got to solve them. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and write down these problems, please, and then go and see if you can figure out your, uh, the end behavior on your own. Okay, here we go. Let's go and take a look at end behavior. Now, before we get started, a couple things I want to remind you. Remember, our end behavior is going to follow the same path. When we have a degree that's even, our end behavior is either going to both rise or both fall. When do we know when they both rise or they both fall? That all depends on if my leading coefficient is positive or negative. If it's positive, both of my end behaviors are going to rise. If my leading coefficient is negative, both of my end behaviors are going to fall. These are two different functions, if you haven't noticed. This is f of x equals negative x squared. This is f of x equals x squared. If my degree is odd, then it's going to fall, then it falls left, rises right, or rises left, falls right. Well, how do we know which one it is? Well, if our f of x is positive, has a leading coefficient that's positive, it's going to fall to the left and rise to the right. If my leading coefficient is negative, it's going to rise to the left and fall to the right. These are two different functions drawn on the same graph. I hope it didn't confuse you. Um, so here we go. So remember, when we're trying to find the leading coefficient, all we need to simply do is just take out our leading term and then determine uh, what, it, what it's going to resemble in our uh, parent graph. So here, I represent my leading term as a one-third x cubed. So now, what I need to do is I need to determine, okay, I have an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient. Since I have an odd degree and my coefficient is positive, my graph is going to fall to the left and rise to the right. So all I'll simply just say is falls left, rises right. The next one. I simply take down my leading coefficient, which is 2x squared. Now it's even, and I have, it's even, and my leading coefficient is positive. So there I have an even degree, and the leading coefficient is positive. Therefore, my function rises left and rises right. Um, on this one, this gets a little bit tricky because guess what? My leading coefficient term, these are not in descending order of their degrees, right? This term should be front and center. However, we have the constant in front, which is all kind of messed up. So we just need to make sure if we we're going to rewrite this correctly, it would be 3x squared minus 7 half and 7 halves x plus 5. So now what I can notice is this is going to be my leading term. So I have negative 3x squared. Well... Very simply, it's going to be an even degree, but my leading coefficient is negative. Therefore, my end degree falls left and falls right. Lastly, here again we have another um, term where it's not, it's not in descending order, right? Remember, we have, when you put in descending order, you have to have your highest degree up and then go down to, all the way to your constant. So this function needs to be rewritten as negative x to the 6 plus 1. Now what I can do is, when I have it in this form, now I determine, well, my x is positive, and the number in front is a negative. Therefore, it's going to represent my parabola, which is rep, um, flipped, which is facing downward. Therefore, I can say my end behavior is false to the left and false to the right. All 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the video. I hope this uh, helped you out, and um, please make sure you uh, come back and go check out the rest. Thanks again.